Hey everyone, Tommy from TechNexus, and thanks for joining me on a new week of videos. Now, I guess I'll, I'll sort of uh, apologize first off. Last week was pretty busy, and I haven't had a chance to make uh, a video, but uh, you know, we're going to try and get back into it this this week. I probably uh, I will try and do as many videos as I can during the week, but for now, I think this week I might only get one or two in um, because we've got a few projects on, so uh, time. Uh, is is dedicated to these projects, but again, I'll, I'll try and get uh, what I can for you guys uh, out there in YouTube land. So I had a request from a follower on Instagram about how to make uh, a new spec. So within Plant 3D or any plant piping package, a spec is the document, and in this case, obviously an electronic document that shows what uh, the the pipers can use on the project. Now, the reason there's a, there's a few reasons. There's uh, the the main one will be in regards to the actual process. So what is flowing through the pipes, whether it's a, a, a liquid or a gas. Uh, you know, there's temperature issues, there's pressure issues, there's all sorts of variables in there that will dictate what can be uh, modelled and what can't be modelled. Now, usually a paper spec, and I've just done a quick search for a paper spec online, uh, and I found this one uh, just using DuckDuckGo uh, with the word piping spec, and this was the first one that came out. So usually a paper spec will look very similar to this that you see here on the screen. It'll say that, uh, you know, for the, the fittings, the valves, any bolts and gaskets and miscellaneous, um, what the fitting will be. So we've got concentric reducers. The end conditions are butt weld, and there's a size between 2 to 14 inch, I would say. And then uh, we've got, it's just to a standard B16.9 uh, with... Uh, Built to ASTM A234, and then there's any any notes. So you'll you'll see, you know, we've got eccentric reducers, concentric reducers, caps, couplings, uh, nipples, gate valves, glow valves, check valves, bolts and gaskets. Um, so it looks like piping is missing out of this. It's probably on another page, but usually this is what will you will give to the plant administrator uh, or the spec builder, and then they will build the electronic spec according to this um, standard, again, for those conditions. And it also means, uh, you know, whatever this is flowing, so it doesn't say on here, but it's all to uh, 150 and it's all in carbon carbon steel. So if we jump back into Plant 3D, you know, the, the out-of-the-box CS150 spec is, you know, let's say it's very similar. It's ASME B16.5 to ASTM A234. you got bolts, caps, and you can see here that the small bore, so 15 to 50, is socket welded, and anything above 80 and above is all going to be butt welded. So even if the end user is running small bore uh, pipe, so let's say we run a 15, and I'm just going to run it out here in the middle of nowhere, and you'll see that it plant knows that automatically it's going to put in socket welded fittings there because that's all that's allowed for um, small bore elbows. Okay, so for the 15, it's always going to put in socket welds. So it kind of makes the piper's job easier in regards to just all they have to do is just turn around and start placing the, the pipe and obviously trying to follow the design conditions, but they don't have to think about what they can and can't use. Now with this spec, sometimes you might have SP items, so specialty piping items down the bottom here. Um, it might be just individual sort of one-off kind of things that it's allowed. So, uh, you know, sometimes if you have a 150 pound rated spec and you have to have a 300 pound fitting in there for whatever reason, then it might be an SP item here. Then you'll have also the 300 pound flanges that will be uh, as part of that as well. So again, if you are going to be doing a, a piping spec, you should be asking the process engineer or the client what uh, this paper spec is. So what that means for you as a administrator, you have to use the uh, Plant 3D spec editor to make, firstly, a catalogue. So Plant 3D does ship with a few different catalogues. So out of the box, there's AME, ASME, AWA, and DIN. And you can see here I've installed the Agro, the Australian Standard one, uh, and I think they're the only other two that I've installed as well. So you can download more, and if you go to the internet and you look up Plant 3D App Store, and you probably get it in, in the first one or two links there of your search engine. So this is where 
the App Store from Autodesk for Plant 3D, you go under the Catalogs and Specs, and to filter out Autodesk, I usually just click on Free, and then you can see the Autodesk ones. So there are more. So there's the Greylock and Techno, uh, Techlock Content Pack. So it contains other, you know, you can see here the, the type of connectors that they've allowed um, in those catalogs. Okay, and you can see what they look like uh, in, inside the software. So for any oil and gas, petroleum, uh, fossil and nuclear chemical, all that kind of stuff. So you have to sign in and then you can download it and it's a free catalog. There are also uh, paid catalogs. So, you know, nozzle catalog with Imperial and metric connections, Shed Tennis metric, tube press, uh, any other, you know, catalogs in there. So there's some here uh, from one of the resellers here in Australia through CAD Group. You've got Victolic and True Press and all that kind of stuff as well. So for 2019, 2020, it just really depends on, uh, you know, what you need. But go to the App Store, look up catalogs, uh, and then have a dig through and see what else you can download. If there isn't anything in there, you're going to have to make new catalog items. And I think for today's videos, I wanted to look at uh, specs. Uh, you can have a look at some of my other videos for catalogs, but we might cover that in a little bit more detail in another video. So you come in here, create a new component, uh, go through and fill out all the values, but you should be able to find most of the stuff in the, the various catalogs. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, if you need to make them, you just need to make them. And once they're in there, they're there forever as a plant item. So, you know, the, the first job or the first time you do it will take time, but then after that, you don't have to redo it for that vendor or that client so you can see here if we look at um, let's look at some world neck flanges and then if I look up uh, the 150 raised face so these are all in, in inches you can uh, edit in catalog or metric but so when we jump into the metric side I can look at the 80 mil uh, flanges and I can asso associate uh, metric values to that as well and you can see here uh, all of these values if you hover your mouse over it it tells you uh, what that is so the flange sheet thickness the outside diameter the nominal diameter and uh, any any other values but uh, I think I'll cover catalogs in another time so the catalog you have to think of the catalog as uh, maybe like a shop or a hardware store or something where or a library or a book library it is where everything is listed inside that database there. So if I go back to everything, then you can see here, I can go look at bleed rings, bolt sets, caps, couplings, crosses. It has everything. So it's everything that you can buy and as close to dimensionally accurate as possible. I wouldn't go three decimal places, but uh, you know, from out of the box, Autodesk have, so you can uh, get rid of those if you want a bit of a rounded off figure, but it's up to, you know, it's obviously uh, your choice at the end of the day, how many decimal places you want to do it to. So when you have your catalog sorted, a spec is a filter of that catalog. So we have the catalog down the bottom here, and I'm just going to go back and select the ASME fittings, and I can go through and add other um sizes of whatever i need in there so uh let's do let's look for something that isn't in here so what have we got flanges socket world let's maybe look for some slip-on flanges so i filter out flip on uh, slip-ons uh they're all going to be raised face because this spec only has raised face and it's all down to 150 so there's only one um type of slip-on flange that i want from this catalog to go into this spec so I can also go through the size range and filter out, but for this exercise, I'm just gonna click on add to spec and then it adds half to 24 inch slip on flanges. Okay, so now I can also double click on that. I can take out certain values. So if I click on remove from spec, so I can take out one and a quarter and one, one and a half inch, go apply and now those end users are not going to see the one and a quarter and one and a half inch as well. So I can just put them back and you can go through and set the part use priority if you need to. So for any conflicts in the two inch side, what is going to be the, the, the priority slip ons or socket welds. So you can uh, go through and adjust that. OK, once you build up your spec, you then put that into the project. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to do a new spec uh, and I'm going to put it on my desktop and I'll just call it YouTube. And I'm going to load the ASME uh, 
pipe and fittings catalog as part of it so I'll just call it here demo spec for YouTube and again you know for your videos you can populate whatever you want now the reason I put it on the desktop is later on we need to import that to the plant 3d project so I want to keep it on my desktop for now uh, until we add it so now I'm going to take out this filter and uh, what can we do so go through and do all and then do pressure class all and let's go to just some more pipe so I want to pick some seamless pipe uh, they're all plain ended uh, and again uh, let's just do some shed 40 pipe okay so from 1 8 to 36 inch seamless plain ended pipe is what I want in the spec uh, and then let's do some elbows let's look for some long radius elbow 90 so shed 40 click on add to spec so in this spec at the moment I have elbows and pipe now I'm just going to leave this for now but before I, I close this off when you have finished your spec you have to do the branch table editor okay and once I don't have the the fittings in here but if you had threadlets uh, uh, weldlets uh, socklets stub ins tees reducers all that kind of stuff you'll see what it is and if I show you the CS 150 spec you can see here that if we've got a 10 inch header and an 8 inch branch we can do a reduced T a T and a reducer or a stub in so by default a 10 inch by 8 inch will always put in a reduced T the second option is a T and reducer so it'll do a 10 inch equal T and then do a 10 by 8 inch reducer on the branch or the other option is a stub in okay and I always say to people just pull up one of the standard specs and you'll see what a, a, a branch table looks like if you don't populate it plant will not connect branches between the the headers and the branches and uh, then you're just going to end up with with open connections everywhere and it's not going to be very good so I'm going to save this spec oh, I'll, I'll go to the YouTube one I'll save this spec this YouTube spec on the desktop and then I'll go back to my plant 3d project go to the pipe specs area right click copy specs to project go to my desktop and then copy that spec in and now it's in there and you can see we've if I double click on it we got the seamless pipe and the elbow in there so if I go to my pull down and I select YouTube and I pick a uh, hundred mil line okay there's that pipe and if we run with it you can see we've got the pipe and elbows if I try to do a T it's only going to do a stub in because it doesn't have um, any T's in there at the moment and you got that just a, a kind of a stub in but it, it is it is but it isn't kind of thing it's just uh, joined those two together so obviously that's not not uh, correct so until we put T's in this spec um, you know you really shouldn't be releasing this spec to the pipers on the project until it's fully uh, completed so now uh, I'm just gonna get out of this and I'll say yes for now so then I just go back into my spec editor so instead of opening that desktop spec I open the one in my project so now I'm editing the actual file in the project and we'll go through and we'll add T's now so same thing um, if I go to shed 40 and then go uh, T's add to spec so now we've got T's in there so equal T's we could go through and do the, the branch table so if I said let's do 10 by 10 so it might take a while okay well that crashed it but let's go back into um, the spec editor let's just double check that so 
So because it crashed, let's load those elbows again. Sorry, those T's. Shed 40. Add to spec. And I'm just going to save it. And then exit out. And then I'll load up Plant 3D 2020 again. And then we can see inside the project that that spec is already there. And if I go to my desktop, so here's my desktop here. I don't need these specs anymore. So they can go, these were the ones on my desktop that I used as a temporary placeholder until I copied the specs into the actual project. So now if I load up that piping model again, and if we go to the spec, then you can see here we've got those T's in there. So if I wanted to, again, throw in a 100 mil T, so I can just type in a node, orientate it, and again, I can just start running uh, pipe off that. Okay, so now that the T's in there, we can start playing around with the routing of the system. So again, just to reiterate, the catalog is the overall library. The spec is a filter of that library to certain conditions. Put it on your desktop or, or a temporary location, right click on the pipe specs, copy to project, and then when it's in, it'll appear in the pipe spec list, and then you can start placing all of the elements in there as well. So that is how you make a new spec. Now, if you're going to make the spec and you add it to the project, it's probably best to complete the spec um, and get someone to sign off on it or approve it before you do this copy to project uh, option in here. Because if once you copy it in there, then users will use it um, and it'll be uh, made read only. Um, and then that way you won't be able to edit it as well. So again, um, just make sure you have it finished first before you, you send it out. And even if you have it, you know, 75, 80% correct, um, but you will have to go through and edit the spec when everyone is out of the project. So it'll either be after hours or, uh, you know, you might edit it locally and then do a save as to the project during a, a lunch time, or you might tell everyone to get out at a certain time. And then that way the spec is in the project. So. Hopefully um, that has answered uh, your question um, on making specs. If there are any comments, please do so. Uh, make those comments in, in the comment section below. I'll endeavor to answer them as close as best I can. Um, but otherwise, uh, have a play with it. If you do get any issues, make comments uh, here or on LinkedIn or on uh, my Instagram channel, and then we can go through and have a bit of, bit of a uh, play with anything else that you come across. Um, if there is a need for uh, an idea on how to make catalog items, I have, like I said, I have done it on my YouTube channel before for custom made catalog items, but if you want something a little bit more specific, then just let me know and I'll try and make a video on that. So have a play. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't, but please do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon for daily notification uh, of my videos or bi-weekly. I'll, I'll try and get uh, back into sort of maybe twice a week now. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video. See you later.